Hello there and a very good evening. You're watching Primetime News on TV1. I'm Dasani Afada for News First and let's start off with a look at tonight's headlines. The price of a loaf of bread to be increased by 5 rupees from midnight tonight. Minister Sajid Premadasa issues directive to remove people illegally farming lands in Suryavava within 7 days. Three people including former Minister Johnston Fernando remanded on charges of misappropriation of state funds. Army called in to remove the carcasses of the elephants who drowned in a swamp in Polonnaruwa. Retaining Vigneshwaran as Chief Minister of the Northern Province is a mistake by the TNA, a statement from MP Sumandiran. Steering Committee to conduct elections for Sri Lanka cricket, Attorney General informs court. News First wishes a very happy birthday to President Maitri Pala Sirisena as he celebrates his 67th birthday today. As he continues on his journey of public service, we wish him all the very best to continue to make the sacrifices and commitment required of him. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party was founded on the 2nd of September 1951. Born the day after, Maitri Pala Sirisena has had a close bond with the political party. Born to an agrarian family, Maitri Palasirisena was educated at the Topavava Mahavidyalaya and Royal College Polo Narua. Engaging with the political affairs of the Communist Party since his school years, Sirisena was steeped in the leftist tradition. In August 1967, Maitri Palasirisena entered active politics as the secretary of the SLFP youth organization in the Polo Narua electorate. Sirisena claimed victory at the parliamentary election held on the 15th of February 1989 and was sworn in as a member of parliament on the 9th of March. At the 1994 parliamentary election, Sirisena, who won the most preferential votes in the Polonarwa district and commenced his sophomore term as an MP, also taking on the responsibility of the portfolio of Deputy Minister of Irrigation. In 1997, he was appointed Cabinet Minister of Mahavali Development and Parliamentary Affairs and also took on the responsibility of Assistant Secretary of the SLFP. In 2000, he was elevated to the position of Vice President of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Following victory at the parliamentary election in 2001, Sirisena was appointed General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. He was appointed Leader of the House in 2014 and the position of Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Mahavali Development in 2005. As the war drew to a close in May 2009, Maitri Pala Sirisena served as the Acting Minister of Defence. In 2010, he was appointed as Minister of Health. Following his overwhelming victory at the presidential election held on the 8th of January 2015, he was sworn in the next day as the 6th Executive President of Sri Lanka. Following his election, President Sirisena immediately committed himself to strengthening of democracy through the passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution to curtail the limitless powers of the President, strengthen independent commissions and establish media freedom. Over the past three and a half years, May circling the sacred bow tree at the president's house in Colombo, which was erected with the donation from the president's personal finances, was unveiled today, marking President Sirisena's birthday. Religious observances were held to celebrate the president's birthday, while rituals were observed yesterday and today to mark the event. The All Ceylon Bakery Owners Association has decided to raise the price of a loaf of bread weighing 450 grams by 5 rupees from midnight tonight. Its chairman N.K. Jawadana said the decision was taken by the executive council of the association. We tried to discuss this matter with the government. We did not receive the opportunity. We have no other choice. The government imposed a 20 rupee additional tax on palm oil. The tax went up to 180 rupees. 
palm oil is used for bakery products in the country. It is used for all the margarine products as well. The administrative council has increased the salaries by 680 rupees. We have to do that salary increase as well. The increase in the dollar is affecting the raw materials for bakery products. Unwillingly, we have to increase the price of a 450 gram loaf of bread by 5 rupees. The All Salon Bakery Owners Association says that increase of a kilogram of wheat flour, which was at 95 rupees to 100 rupees, is also a reason for this price increase. He added that the price of other bakery products will not be increased. The Sri Lanka Army and Wildlife Officers engaged in a joint operation today to remove the carcasses of seven elephants who drowned after being trapped in a swamp along the Periyaru River in the Somavathia Reserve in Polonnaruwa. The prompt action taken by the Army immediately after reporting of the tragic incident is truly worthy of the praise of the people in Sri Lanka. However, it is saddening that the state still does not have a proper national program in place to protect the treasured Sri Lankan elephant. Over a period spanning several days, seven elephants have been trapped in the swamp overgrown with aquatic plants. When the incident came to light, the subject minister visited the area and made inquiries. These elephants are the pride of our country. If we have identified this area as an elephant crossing, then we must place a guard here. We need to bring a machine in and remove this. These people only make an effort after something happens and it is only at that time. Afterwards, they forget about it completely. Everyone is accountable for this, the people who have ruled this country so far and all the former officials of the Wildlife Ministry. There is no understanding whatsoever. There was no project in our country to protect the elephants. This has been a national problem from the past to the present. If there is anyone who thinks this can be done within 10 to 15 months, there is something wrong with their heads. It cannot be done. Area residents claim the overgrowth of aquatic plants, including the invasive water hyacinth, caused the entrapment of the animals. The army also took steps today to clear the invasive plants. Following an event held today, Minister of Irrigation and Water Management Duminda Disanayaka spoke on various projects that have been undertaken to clean up the environment by destroying invasive aquatic plants such as these. Majority of the tanks in the country have hyacinth and other aquatic plants in them. The main reason for this, in my opinion, is the drought. Our areas were affected by the drought. That is why the wild elephants enter into the villages looking for water. This is an accident, but even humans can face this situation. How much funds are allocated for the protection of wildlife, irrigation systems and the management of tanks and anicots through the budget? How many subject ministers, state ministers and deputy ministers are appointed for this purpose? Even though public funds are spent to maintain the large number of officials, at the end of the day, it has come to a situation where humans, as well as animals, have to pay with their lives. If it wasn't for the army, the officials from the wildlife department would come here, inspect and leave. The carcasses would rot here. The people cannot even bathe. Take a look at the money that they can earn through these animals. They earn through safaris. That money should be spent for these issues. The residents of Agbopura North in Kantale have been protesting over the wild elephant issue over a long period of time. Minister of Wildlife and Sustainable Development Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca has promised these people two months ago that a 20 kilometer long elephant fence will be repaired and a new one will be constructed. I promise to construct the elephant fence in this village and the next. <laughs> Area residents charge that the minister has failed to fulfill any of the promises that were made by him. Can the Ministry of Wildlife or the ministers provide solutions to these issues? Minister Saat Fonseca had provided a document to the cabinet with several recommendations on the wild elephant issue. One of those recommendations were to construct an electric fence around 7,000 kilometers in distance covering 16 out of the 19 districts that are affected as a result of the wild elephant problem. The project is to be carried out under two phases and the estimated cost for the project is 5 billion rupees. However, environmentalists point out that these solutions are not practical.
He has suggested to construct a park to put all the wild elephants in one place and surround it with a fence. Even though he is the Minister of Wildlife, he does not have the faintest of ideas as to how an elephant behaves. He's There are around 6,000 elephants in the country, as per the data obtained in 2011. The elephant deaths stand at around 250 on average as a result of human activities. The amount varies between 250 and 300. That is equal to the death of 60 to 7 humans annually. That is a grave threat. <laughs> When the Hambantota port was leased out on a long-term basis to the Chinese company, they handed over 15,000 acres of land. These lands are areas where elephants roam. They plan on providing 62,500 acres for the cultivation of sugarcane in Bibila. The same is being done to an area of 68,250 acres in Kubin Mimale. What is happening now is Minister Sarat Fonseca does not have any scientific mechanisms to control this issue. They are enacting development projects and when there is public opposition, they use these strategies to stop this. That is why the elephants enter the village. Minister of Housing and Construction Sajid Premadasa issued a directive on the officials of the Mahavali Authority to remove all those who are illegally engaging in cultivations in the Surya Veva area within a period of seven days. <laughs> During the time of the former president, many of his henchmen acquired land from this area. They have acquired 20, 30 or even 40 acres of land. Where have they taken it from? They have taken it from where the elephants live. What has happened now? They have illegally cultivated 20 to 30 acres of land and now the elephants encroach on the villagers. They now spread rumors that these people are protected by Sajid Premadasa. It is a lie. Were 20 to 40 acres of land divided among those who lived in the village? They are divided among the rich living in the capital. Those who handed over these lands to the rich are now coming here in Prados to check up on these lands. They distributed these lands some time ago and now they say Sajid Premadasa protects this. I like to state this in public. I do not protect anyone who cultivates illegally. I instruct the officials of the Mahavali Authority to remove all those who are illegally engaged in cultivations in the Suryavava area within a period of seven days. This was done by the Flowerbud Party, but the blame is on the elephant. I have never bought anyone from Colombo to reside here in Suryavava. I have not and I will not distribute lands among any of my relatives. Because do you know why? Whom does these lands belong to? They belong to the people in Suryavava Hambantota. <laughs> Minister Sajid Premadasa made these statements during the event to declare open the 114th and 115th Udagammana constructed under the Samata Sevena program. These villagers named Sandaras Gama and Samahiru Gama consist of 27 houses. The minister also inspected the house that a poor family had been residing in before the opening of the two villages. <laughs> Events to grant ownership deeds and visitor housing loans also took place under the auspices of minister and deputy leader of the United National Party, Sajid Premadasa. While water is considered the driving force of all nature, people living in rural areas of our country do not have access to clean drinking water. The gum at the door-to-door -door team met with a group of villagers who have to undergo many hardships to find clean drinking water. Gum at the door-to-door -door initiative. After they walk for miles and find drinking water, that water is not pure and it is not suitable for human consumption. This village in Kirinochi, the Nachikuda village, is a perfect example to depict how people suffer as a result of the unavailability of clean drinking water. The area is currently facing a drought. The villagers say that they are sometimes unable to bear the heat and that they lose consciousness 
as a result. The lack of water for consumption is a major issue in several areas that we travel to. The people of the Anbupuram village also face the same problem. They face issues in terms of transportation and the bicycle has become their main mode of transport. The residents of this village strongly urge the authorities to take action against the illegal moonshine business taking place in their village. They too face issues due to the lack of clean drinking water. The gum at the team also visited the Pale base hospital and inspected the problems. The residents of Godapitiya are facing issues due to crocodiles in the area. While the residents of the village have to obtain water from the Nilvala river, several people have fallen victim to crocodile attacks over the years. The safety nets are damaged and they have not been repaired. These people who are potters are facing issues as their products do not receive a proper price in the market. They say as a result their future as well are also causing a drop in demand. Though this village has a water purification plant, villagers claim that it does not operate properly. They say that the institutions that are responsible for maintaining the unit does not look into it. As a result, these villagers have to purchase the water that they consume. Since all the vavas located in and around the village have dried up, the agricultural activities are also challenged. Come at the Door-to-Door -door Initiative. Three persons, including former Minister Johnston Fernando, were ordered into remand custody until the 11th of this month by the Kurunagala High Court today over the misappropriation of state funds. Kurunagala High Court Judge Menakavite Surya ordered that former Lak Satosa Chairman Nalin Fernando and Minister Johnston Fernando's private secretary, Mohammed Shakir, also be placed in remand custody. The Attorney General had indicted these three suspects over the failure to make payment for the purchase of goods worth over 5 million rupees from Lak Satosa. <laughs> Minister Johnston provided relief to flood victims and repaid the money too and now he is in remand custody for that. We hope that the final verdict will be a good verdict. We know that those who broke into the central bank of this country are still at large. This is what they call good governance. <laughs> Johnston Fernando says he took money and paid it back. Gotabe Rajapaksa said a similar thing. He said he took millions to build a memorial for his parents and that he paid it back in installments. When Mahindra Rajapaksa was being questioned about Keith Noya, what did he say? He said that although Noya was hammered to a pulp, he was not killed. Be happy about that. This practice can also be seen in the present government. When investigations were taking place into the bond scam, we heard the Prime Minister say, do not worry, we have this money. This is absurd. They loot, plunder and they say that they have returned the money or we abducted them and did not kill them. Is this the law? Can anyone in the general public steal 10 rupees from the government, return it and avoid litigation? What is necessary is not returning what was stolen. What is necessary is to punish those who steal, those who abduct and engage in assaults. <laughs> Following a religious event in Sri Ganga Rama Vihare Makuta Kurunagala, former General Secretary of the United National Party Tissa Atanayaka expressed the following views. 50 to 60 percent of UNP supporters in rural areas are fed up. The United National Party should have supported the general public who supported them. You cannot predict the future of the UNP. The citizens are fed up of the leadership of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. A majority are demanding for a change. A small portion of the party are not willing to make that change. 
there's only one more year for the next election. There is no room for a new leader to emerge. The leader of a party is elected annually with the votes of the working committee and the members of parliament. But that does not happen anymore. As far as I know, officials have not been appointed for the year 2018 and the year is almost over. So they have avoided the annual responsibility and forgotten about the rights of the UN peers. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa attending an event held in Siemalandua expressed the following views. Some have established courts just for the Rajapaksas and have even filed legal action against us in those courts. I believe this is not being done anywhere else in the world. This is what we call politics. We are against this. We are taking to the streets on the 5th to stand against the rising cost of living, against the injustice and against the price hikes. They are stopping buses from entering Colombo on that day. They have said they are going to carry out a survey this week. They had two years to conduct this survey, but they want to do it on the day we take to the streets. This itself shows how our power has affected them. The IGP has never come forward to talk about rallies before they are even held. They will only take action after the rally takes place. The Committee on Public Accounts held a meeting at the Jaffna District Secretariat's office today to receive public opinion about the upcoming budget. Responding to questions raised by journalists, Chairman of the Committee on Public Accounts, MP M. A. Sumandiran criticized the decision made to appoint C. V. Vigneswaran as the Chief Minister of the Northern Province. <laughs> The Ceylon Tea Exporters Association chairman says that the quality of Ceylon tea has decreased. He expressed these views at the 19th AGM of the Ceylon Tea Exporters Association, which was held on Friday. So we got to modernize, we got to think out of the box, we got to change uh, our practices and attitudes, and there's got to be a closer... the box I think is very timely relevant and I don't think it's a luxury for us anymore to work in an industry that we call mature in the traditional way that we've been used to for the last uh, 150 years so what we have seen due to various situations that have arisen for instance the ban on glyphosate people have used ban and not allowed chemicals when I say not allowed chemicals chemicals which are not known or allowed in certain very exclusive markets like Japan. So these were the problem problem arose few months ago where a lot of containers got detected, some were burned, some were returned. The chairman has also mentioned the direct and indirect employment that the export tea industry generates is over two million uh, empl employment opportunities. Leader of the JVP parliamentarian Anura Kumar Desanayaka expressed the following news at a public meeting in Anjiakulam in Mulativ. It is true that there are politicians behind some of these financial institutions. Even Saravanabhavan had an institution that grants loans. It was called Sapras. Eradicating poverty in the rural level is a serious issue that this country faces. We can only uplift these people from going into debt by developing the rural economy. You cannot develop the rural economy without developing the agriculture and the port industry. We need a program to develop these. Sri Lanka police celebrated its 52nd I beg your pardon, 152nd anniversary today at the Police Field Force Headquarters in Colombo under the auspices of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Subject Ministers Ranjit Madhama Bandara, Deputy Minister Nalan Bandara, IGP Pooja Jasundara and police officers representing the entire country were present at the occasion. The event was made colourful by a number of items performed by the Police Special Task Force. Special mementos were also presented to the Prime Minister and Subject Minister to mark the occasion. Occasions. 
Speaking on our Newsline program this morning, DIG Ajit Rohana commented on the seeming unfairness of Sri Lanka police having to take the flag when it comes to controlling public disorder. The, one of the biggest challenges is this public disorder management. Public disorder management. You know, in other countries, yeah. so there are stakeholders. There are stakeholders once the protest campaign or the strike is conducted all the stakeholders they come they discuss get together and they solve the problem but here the high if it is a problem or an issue of the higher education ministry mm. so they need to involve in the issue yeah now if it is sometimes you know the this railway yeah. or the bus yeah so they are conducting a strikes they are conducting protest protest campaigns so every time yeah. the finally police are the scapegoat police are the scapegoat because other stakeholders in the system they don't take any action to prevent such activities finally you know in the in the afternoon when they are blocking mm. when police use tear gas when police use uh, uh, batons when police use water so in the evening news they highl they highlight the police action but yeah. you know the other stakeholders they are inactive so this is the very big problem in the country and everyone is sleeping but finally mm. all the criticisms i mean everyone criticizes the police so it's a that is the biggest problem uh, uh, actually the sri lanka police are facing today Speaking on our Talk of the Town program on Yes 101, DIG for Traffic Ajit Rohan has said by December Sri Lanka police will be able to accept electronic payments and that arrangements are underway. Senior Deputy Solicitor General Sumanthi Dharmawardhana revealed in court today that a steering committee will be appointed to hold the elections for Sri Lanka cricket. He said that the committee will comprise of two retired High Court judges or two retired judges from a superior court and a senior official attached to the elections department. The petition filed by Nishant Ranatunga at the Court of Appeal seeking an order preventing Thilanga Sumati Pala from contesting for the post of President of SLC or any other post was taken up today. Senior Deputy Solicitor General Sumit Dharma Wardana appeared in court representing the Attorney General and the Minister of Sports, Faiz Mustafa. The Senior Deputy Solicitor General informed court that discussions will be held with the ICC to hold the elections and necessary steps will be taken to amend the laws and regulations. The case was postponed to the 30th of November. The court said that the minister can go ahead with the activities that he hopes to accomplish. We also hope that the election is held as soon as possible. Not holding the election will be a blow to democracy. However, hold in the election with those who are not able to compete or not provide voting rights for those who have voting rights will also be a blow to democracy. The minister wants to study this properly and take a policy decision to take this sport forward. Following a recent meeting with the ICC in Dubai, the Minister of Sports announced that Sri Lanka cricket has been granted time until the 9th of February to hold the election for Sri Lanka cricket. Former Test cricket captain... amended and that if this is not done gentlemen would never return to the game senior players would never return to the game this means that this corrupt bunch of people will continue to run cricket in the country and they will destroy the sport I have informed the president and the prime minister of what has happened to the sport if sports minister Faisal Mustafa has a proper backbone he should amend the constitution of Sri Lanka cricket before holding the election there is no point in holding the election without amending the constitution. I do not know if the Minister of Sports has a proper grasp of what he is doing for cricket because he seems to be frightened. I believe that the President and the Prime Minister should focus more attention on this issue. If things don't change, then we might be forced to say that the current Sports Minister is also receiving kickbacks from those who are in the cricket administration. <laughs> Sri Lankan Airlines continued to make mammoth losses ever since Emirates seized control of the management. This was revealed at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry today. 
For 2015-2016, Sri Lankan Airlines incurred a loss of 12.6 billion rupees, of which 2.5 billion was due to compensation payments for aircraft cancellation. Similarly, for 2016-2017, Sri Lankan Airlines incurred a loss of 28.9 billion rupees, of which 14 billion was a compensation payment for the cancellation order of several A350-900 aircrafts. The Emirates contract of managing the airlines ended in 2008 and the profits for 2007-2008 were 4.8 billion rupees. Immediately after Emirates ceased control, UL incurred a loss of 9.9 .9 billion rupees. The government of Sri Lanka is the principal shareholder of UL and its interests must be represented by a treasury representative. What is astonishing is that from 2008-2009 onwards, there was not a single Treasury representative in the airline board of directors to represent the government's interests. And that's a wrap of primetime news for tonight. For the news for STEAM, I'm Dasmiya Tadar. Good night.